Hey, how's it going? Uh, I got a little bit bored, felt like making a video today, and I was just like, well, I haven't showed my sketchbooks yet, so I've got like a whole couple heaping piles of sketchbooks I wanted to show off eventually, and uh, I figured what better day than today. It didn't look like a lot of people were putting out videos today, so I'm like, eh, I may as well get a Tuesday video in since I had the rest of the day off and I got the next two days off, so yay. Uh, but first, I got a hold up to my hashtag promise as I previously had made my last video where basically I'm, I'm trying to clear out my reading queue and my collection. Um, so the first one I picked was Seven to Eternity. I got this from Comic Book Champ in his contest. So thank you once again, Comic Book Champ, for uh, giving this away in your contest. Uh, it was a pretty awesome read, actually. Um, I don't even know where to really begin with this one, but man, there was a lot going on in this book. Um, I guess you could describe it as like a hard sci-fi tale. And there's only like four issues worth, but it felt like I read like eight to ten issues. There was so much they padded into four issues of comic book. Like I was very impressed by Rick Remender and Jerome Opania just knocked it out on the art too. Like if you've seen his art in his Marvel books before, um, the quality of this cover basically is what the art looks like inside. So if absolutely nothing else, check it out for the wonderful, awesome art. But I guess uh, just a very brief, semi-vague description, because I don't really want to spoil too much of this, because I went in reading this knowing nothing about it at all, and I think that was the way to go in. But um, <clears throat> short version of the story, more or less, um, there's a guy who's, I wouldn't call it a post-apocalyptic wasteland type world, because it's not really even Earth, it's a different planet. So a screwed up planet, um, there's this guy, he's more or less just trying to go on a quest to redeem his family's name and grant protection for his family uh, from like the mud god and some of the other crazy characters that are in it. Um, his, you know, there's not a lot of humans that actually are in this book, but the ones who are, they, they're not really the dominant species on this planet from what I can tell. Like I said, there's a lot going on in this book, um, but you deal with like demigods, um, evil warlord rulers and all that type of stuff. So just a very quick review because um, I want to get into the sketchbook. So absolutely check this out. And if you guys didn't see my previous video, make sure um, if you guys wanted to participate in the tag once again, um, I just tag everyone watching this to see, to make sure if you guys want to read something, uh, just read it, give it a review on your channel. Uh, I'm going to try to do a review about every other video I do. So I got a couple videos planned this week. So hopefully I can get something else read, reviewed at the beginning or end of that video. So enough said about that. Um, so I'll go ahead and get to my sketchbook. So basically I have a whole bunch of sketchbooks I've accumulated uh, from going to conventions over the last 15 years or so. Uh, and if you guys saw my tour video of my room, uh, you know, I like to try to support as many artists as possible. Um, and sometimes, you know, getting stuff from them, like uh, commissions and stuff, can get a little pricey. So, you know, convention, like uh, sketchbooks, uh, prints and stuff are usually a nicer way uh, to be able to give the artist something back and to have something from them that's not too horribly expensive. Um, so usually I got, I think, almost all these. There's a few I bought off Amazon stuff and just got signed. I figured I'd show off anyway since it was kind of in the collection. Uh, but most of these were bought from the artists themselves, from the artist alley booth or table. Um, so I guess without further ado, I'll show my first one and one of my favorites. Uh, this is Ethan Van, Skyver, Ethan Van Skyver's sketchbook I bought from him in 2007. And he's actually nice enough to draw Hal Jordan on the cover too. Um, and I won't show the interiors too much on these just because I'm, you know, if I was an artist selling my artwork uh, for usually like 10 or 20 bucks a pop, usually... It's not the nicest thing just to show off the whole book. I might show a page or two just because there are some really nice ones. Um, and some of these are kind of hard to come by too. Usually, one, especially like the decade old ones, these don't pop out on eBay too often. So I like getting these sketchbooks just because they are a little bit more unique than trying to hunt down those individual issues and that type of stuff. But um, like I said, I really like this Ethan Van Skyver one because he was nice enough to draw one of my favorite comic book characters, Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern, on there. Um, next up, I got one from Greg Tosini, who is the awesome artist of Low, another uh, Rick Remender book out there. And this guy has some awesome art. If you guys haven't uh, read Low or seen any of this guy's art, I sh probably should have been on some more underrated artist lists for my contest. I kind of forgot to put him on there myself, I'll admit. Uh, but this guy is awesome. Check him out. 
Um, I was glad to get his sketch covered. I think, yeah, he just, there's a signature right there. Like I said, I bought this. Hey, what's up, comic boys? What's up? Jeremy Edwards. Sorry, my things keep popping up faster than I can read them. Once again, I'm using my phone, so I apologize. I might miss the uh, chat. One day, I'm going to get my computer back up running the way I want, so I can leave that up and all that stuff. Uh, if you guys watch my C2E2 video, you might remember this John Tim sketchbook I got. Um, he was nice enough to do like a little Harley head sketch inside. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. Another one, and most if you guys want to take a closer look at any of the covers on these, I also put them on my Snups page, which I'll leave a link to that shelf in the link below once I'm all done recording this video. Um, next up, I got a nice, awesome Jim Starinko art book. He was selling it, um, i trying to think of the name. I think it was a, not Louisville Supercon, Derby City Comic Con. Uh, I think it was last October he was there. Uh, he had a pretty big line, and... I don't know if you guys have ever tried to meet Jim Starinko at a con. Usually if the line's not even that big, man, he can talk all day, which is pretty cool. He's a really nice guy. Hey, what's up, Elk? How's it going? Um, but like I said, there was only like maybe 10 people in front of me. I waited like 40 minutes. So I'm like, I don't know, I just want to get something from him, especially since I waited half an hour. And, you know, he's nice enough to be selling these sketchbooks pre-signed. Um, I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks for this, so a little pricey, but Strinko anymore, he charges like probably 20 bucks a SIG at this point, so I didn't feel too bad about buying this, and it's a really nice quality book. Um, so like I said, I mean, look, here's just an example of the art inside it. It's so awesome. Absolutely love Jim Strinko's stuff. Oh yeah, um, Mike Turner. Um, always had the huge lines at the Wizard Worlds I went to. <laughs> I wish I had an art book from Mike Turner. That would be awesome. Uh, but I'll settle with a couple sigs I got from him. Next up, like I said, I had a few of the... Uh, yeah, had him use. He's just like, what's up? I actually did get him talking about Arrested Development. I was uh, When I met him at a Cincinnati last year, I was wearing my uh, like Bluth Banana Stand t-shirt. And that got him going a little bit on Arrested Development. So that's the most I've ever heard that guy talk in my life. Uh, he was actually a pretty nice guy once you got him going. Hey, what's up, Tat? Just caught your live stream, actually. It gave me the idea to start mine. And so, unfortunately, I was at work by the time you were live streaming. But uh, glad you could catch mine. So thanks for being here. Uh, but I got a John Romita Jr. art book. Uh, Marvel had this series of, like, widescreen art books for a little while going. Um, so I decided to pick those up when they came out. I think I got a Deo Dado coming up as well. But they're kind of neat. They kind of give, like, a little story about the art and that stuff. Um, inside there, and I think, I'm trying to think of the company that put these up, but it, unfortunately the name escapes me right now, but if you guys see these, they're actually pretty nice. Hey, what's up, Bueller? Um, actually, I cut your, uh, coffee show. I thought about making a, uh, parody of the Coffees and Comics show called, like, Juicing and Comics or something like that, because I made a really nice juice today, uh, awesome green juice, so got me energized to make this video, so... Once again, these are a pretty cool series. If you guys can pick them up or see them out there, they're relatively cheaper too. I think I've seen them as low as like 10 bucks, um, just people trying to flip them. So um, yeah, it's just kind of a typical Marvel hardcover fair where they'll go for retail for a while. This retailed at 50 bucks originally. Uh, I think I saw a lunchbox pop up. Hey, how's it going, man? Um, but yeah, these are pretty much worth you know, a few bucks at least, that's for sure. They're pretty nice books as well. Uh, next up, I actually bought this online, but I've met him uh, previously before. Uh, Ryan Otley has a pretty cool series of sketchbooks. This particular one is called Violence and Pigtails. Um, like I said, this is a hoss of a sketchbook. And actually, when I bought it from him online, he was nice enough to throw a couple things in just for free. Because uh, usually when I see a, a, a great independent artist I like, like Ryan Otley or a couple of the others coming up, I'll show... Um, Usually I like to try to get on the pre-order bandwagon just because I know, you know, it, it gives them money to work on their projects. Uh, so Ryan Otley is nice enough to throw in the Stranger Things print, which I've seen him, I think, sell at his artist alley tables before, but I thought this was a pretty awesome print um, just because who doesn't love some Stranger Things? Um, so that was pretty cool. I actually got to find a way to frame this and put that up. I think it's a little bit longer than a comic book, so unfortunately it doesn't fit right in a comic bag. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to get that on display at some point. And actually, I didn't even remember this was in here. Hey, there's a signed copy of Invincible 116 that was just hanging out in this hardcover. So pretty cool for Ryan Otley to throw in a book I didn't even remember I had. So that was just on the inside flap in here. And actually, yeah, I think he signed it somewhere in here. Um, yeah, actually, he was awesome enough to sign it in gold right there. But I think this book might still be available on his... Um, 
I don't, I can't remember what his web page is. I might have to try to find the link and put it below as well when I'm done with this video. But I mean, his his stuff's coming up on Spider Man after the Dan Slot run wraps up. So uh, I always keep saying like, you know, I'm probably gonna be done with DC and Marvel soon, which I haven't bought in DC and Marvel for about a month or two now. But man, his Spider Man runs tempting because I think after you know reading his stuff in Invincible, I always thought he'd be a phenomenal Spider Man artist. And it's so cool to finally see him get on the Spider-Man book. So definitely recommend Ryan Otley. Uh, next up, once I got this C2E2, you guys might recognize from my previous video, so I won't show it too much. Uh, Tula Lote, I uh, was selling these little ones and she actually did a, a little head sketch on the inside. That was in my C2E2 haul video, uh, which I blew through that way back when, so I won't get into that too much. Uh, next up, I got this at the, I call it the original C2E2 in 2010. Uh, Joe Kubert was not in attendance, but the other two Kubert brothers were. Uh, they were selling these big Kubert uh, family uh, sketchbooks, and they were all three nice enough to make sure they got a signature collected on it. So I actually met Adam and Andy at this convention, but unfortunately Joe was not in attendance. Would have been awesome to meet Joe Kubert before he, you know, he passed away a few years ago. Uh, but who doesn't love the whole Kubert family art and? Like I said, if anyone's got any suggestions on how to store or bag and board these, usually I just kind of have them loose on my bookshelf. Um, hey, what's up, Prowler? How's it going? Uh, but, you know, this one's already getting dinged up a little bit more than I like, and I really want to take some good care of this one. But I don't think there's a bag and board this big, just to put it in perspective. Like, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> so if anyone's got any cool tips out there, let me know. Uh, but like I said, this got some you know, absolutely awesome like old covers that Joe did and each of the uh, Kubert family members actually has their own tab I don't know if you can kind of see that on the side they actually have their own tab inside the book so of course it, most of it's dedicated to Joe which it should be I mean he's the he's the father of this whole family that is awesome at art and then you know Adam and Andy have their own respective you know art tabs in here which I always love these like uh, ultimate covers that Adam did hey what's up cat um, so I love those Ultimate X-Men Adam Kubert covers that are in here and then who doesn't love some Andy 90s 80 Kubert too so there's like the Son of the Demon one uh, absolutely awesome this is one of my this might be one of my top absolute favorite uh, sketchbooks of my collection just because like I said it's I don't have any other piece of merchandise comic book anything that has been signed by all three Kubert brothers so this is definitely one of my favorite things in my whole collection I would say all right, got to clear the way. Sorry about that. Next up, one of the biggest hosses in my collection. You guys saw this in my C2E2 video as well. Got to show it off just one more time. The Art of Jock. If you guys see this on Amazon or uh, I think Mondotees.com was selling it too. They had a limited edition for a while even. Pick this book up. One of the coolest art books there is out there. Like I said, I was nice. He was uh, nice enough to give me the sketch when I got a signature from him, which Jack was cool as all could get out. Like he was, um, you know, I think he was charging after a while per sig for some people, but then I brought this art book up, and he, did, I didn't even know they were charging till after I got out of line. The dude in front of me, he's like, "Man, you paid him that much to get those." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" So, Jack seems to be pretty appreciative of his fan base. And all that good stuff, even though you might hear he's charging for SIGs after like a certain amount, which is cool, you know, to each his own. Um, I was kind of looking for one of those crazy, like, yeah, here's an example of how crazy this uh, art book gets. So there's like this glossy page in the middle of it, of uh, I think a Dark Knight 3 cover bonus thing he did. I think it actually, like, I don't do it on this video because I don't have like four hands to describe it, but it actually peels off and is translucent. So it's pretty crazy. Like I said, it, this, like the Mondo art books, if you guys don't know what Mondo is, uh, mondotees.com, uh, they have a lot of posters, but they have, also have a lot of other cool stuff too. They've started making a couple art books, which I left my uh, Mondo poster book downstairs. I'll show that one day. Uh, but I think this is the first dedicated artist art book that they've put out. And like I said, this one is absolutely amazing. Check this out if you guys have not already. It's pretty cool. Uh, next up, I was hoping to get this signed, but I did not, fortunately, uh, the last uh, C2E2 I went to. Uh, Icons by Jim Lee. Highlights a lot of his uh, DC and Wildstorm stuff, and I think this can be found pretty cheap as well, um, if you guys are interested in this type of uh, huge art book. It's basically like a giant coffee table book uh, dedicated to Jim Lee DC art. Fortunately, it's kind of a shame, you know, couldn't get the Marvel stuff in there, but, you know, rights and all that good stuff. Uh, but it definitely has, like, a lot of his uh, early 2000s Batman run in here. Uh, his Wildcat stuff he did, of course. Like I said, lots of Batman 
Uh, covers a lot of Superman for tomorrow that he did with uh, Brian Azzarello. So pretty cool book there. Like I said, I wish uh, Jim Lee, you know, he always gets caught up with the DC stuff when he goes to conventions, but it'd be nice if somehow one day he could do his own artist alley table and sell like a bunch of prints and art books. I would love to see what he would offer. I know he'd have something really cool. Uh, next up, we got a couple Adam Hughes books I bought from Adam. Uh, this first one, well, I guess this is my last one technically. Uh, he was selling this 2017 edition art book. I guess it's his 30 year anniversary in a business. He was selling this at Cincinnati Comic Expo last year. And he was actually nice enough, of course, to sign it. Um, I think he usually charges uh, 20, maybe $40 for something like this. I can't remember because I got like a whole package of stuff from him. Like I ended up getting a, a just a quick head sketch and an art book from him. So yeah, he, he hit my wallet pretty good once I met him. But I'll just show a little taste of the art in here. Because like I said, I don't want to spoil the artist's art too much that's inside the book. Um, like I said, any of this stuff could have been the cover to this thing. Um, so I'm glad to have like one of the bigger, nicer format uh, Adam Hughes sketchbooks from him. Um, and then uh, I think the first time I was actually collecting a little bit of Adam Hughes, I bought one of these smaller ones. Uh, I can't remember I wonder if the year is in here. Um, doesn't look like... At 2009. So I bought this from him in 2009. It's about nine years ago. Wow, nine years. Wow, I'm getting old. I'm sorry. Um, so I've had this one for a while. Nice power grow on the inside. Uh, so who doesn't love that? Like I said, and like I, said, I don't know how the collectability of these things are. Um, some of them don't go for too much. Some of them probably like the, uh, hey, what's up, Don the Doctor? Um, some of them go for a little bit. Of but like I said, these are things, like I said, I'll collect them just to support the artist and keep my own collection. I've never even thought about flipping any of these because they're just all so awesome. Uh, next up, I bought Rob Guillory's uh, art book. And this is a pre-order. Um, that I just found him talking about on Twitter and I don't know if he even sold it anywhere else besides Twitter and his artist alley booth so he has like his own like a little artist web page too um, I think he's selling these right now if you guys are interested in it um, but like I said a lot of chew in here of course a lot of the other stuff he's did too um, and it looks kind of like a you know maybe from back here it looks cheap I don't know how it turns on the camera but it actually feels pretty heavy duty even though it's not a hardcover it kind of has that handling of a hardcover so it's actually pretty cool I've never seen another art book like it but I just love his quirky drawings of like Wolverine and Deadpool um, some pretty cool stuff in there um, I wanted to show one rest like actually I'll just show the turtles one since they're behind me um, all right man uh, have a good night elk thanks for coming man but yeah, I just got to show at least one turtle's drawing there. So I won't show too much else because I know he's probably still trying to sell these out there somewhere. So definitely recommend that if you see him at a con. Very friendly. He's done a sketch in every one of my Chew Hard covers. Uh, so this guy knows how to treat his fan base, Rob Guillory. So check him out. Next up, like I said, I won't go into it too much because I showed this in a previous video. Uh, but I bought a, a sketchbook from Ginny Frizen. It's, actually, it's mostly just a, her recent run of covers that she's done on Wonder Woman. A uh, few Dynamite covers in here too. Uh, she This is volume nine, so she has a whole run of these. Um, maybe one day I'll start to collect these, but man, I think it was like 10 bucks a pop, which is understandable. I mean, you're at a con, you gotta pay for your table, uh, but it'd be cool to have some of the earlier ones too. I probably should have bought volume one first since I've been started collecting a lot of the Wonder Woman covers, but I just wanted something from her and she signed on the inside, so I was glad to help support her and her table. Uh, got a Mike Deodato Jr. Like I said, it's one of those like widescreen Marvel art books that they had sold, I think, is, I want to say mid-2000s, but it could have been like 2010, 2011. And he was nice enough to sign on the inside there for me when I met him and got a sketch from him way back when. Uh, and even the uh, trade dress on the inside looks pretty awesome. It's like a full spread. So uh, absolutely love these versions of art books. I think, you know, I was talking to him and he did have a little bit of input uh, on what went into these books. So I'm assuming Ramita Jr. and I'm trying to think of the other artists they did. They did like maybe four of these in that Marvel art series and then they had like the movie versions too. I don't know if you guys have seen those like movie pictures they put in this type of book but they've done things like that before too. Um, but yeah like I said they they were selling these. I'm trying to think I've seen them at cons for like 10 and 20 bucks. Uh, if you guys see these I recommend them because they're all pretty cool. Um, next up I got a, a Clayton Crane art book, um, and this was actually like comic size, which I thought was pretty cool, so it actually fits in a bag. And I think he, yeah, he signed it 100 of 333, so I think there's only 333 of these things in existence. Uh, but like I said, I just, 
who doesn't love some Clayton Crane? These things are just awesome. Uh, so, and I just love that whole wraparound cover there. Um, so, hey, what's up, Joker? Hope you're feeling all right tonight, man. And actually, it's kind of neat. He shows, he talks about like the development process of his art on the inside. Uh, and then sometimes, like if he takes a picture and does a drawing of somebody, uh, he'll actually show like the picture of the person and then do the drawing of it too. So, just like I said, it burns it's here. It's like the uh, digital process of him doing his whole drawing. So, not only do you get some cool art in this, uh, you get kind of like a how-to of how he does his art. So, pretty awesome Clayton Crane cover there. Very informative. And like I said, if you guys see him at an artist alley table, I know his commissions are going to be very high and very hard to get. But if he has a sketchbook like this, absolutely seek it out. All right, next up, I got a pair of J. Scott Campbell books. So I got the Shades of Grey series. I think I'm missing one in this series. I think because this the first one is uh, Shades of Grey, which these are some of the very first art books I bought because I'm such a huge J. Scott Campbell fan uh, when I start going to conventions. And, you know, as soon as I heard he was going on, I'm like, I got to get like anything I can from him. So um, he is nice enough to have these. I think they're like 10 or 20 bucks at the time. But he was nice enough to have something affordable I could pick up at his table because, you know, broke college kid, basically. Um, and then just an example of the art on the inside there. So it's like Iron Man, Black Widow and Miss Marvel and some others. Um, so who does not love this? And actually, I think this was my favorite one because, yeah, it even shows, I didn't know this, but like he did an Indiana Jones sketch card series, I guess. So my, it's funny because I went to this convention with my brother and he, is a, he got obsessed with trying to find these sketch cards. Um, so basically, there's like an Indiana Jones trading card series. And in those trading cards, they had like these blank cards. They would, you know, artists would draw sketches on them and then they'd put them in at random inside the box my brother bought a whole case of the indiana jones cards and didn't find a single thing so but it would have been so awesome to find any of these cards here i like i said i didn't know they existed until this book uh so if anyone sees any a pack of indiana jones cards out there from the mid 2000s you might want to pick it up you could get a free j scott campbell sketch um and then the show loss is pretty big at the time uh i don't know what these drawings were for if there was a lost comic or something in the process or j scott campbell just really liked lost uh but he was doing this like whole like page after page of just sketches from lost so i thought that was kind of interesting too uh and then the next year i went to another wizard world he was actually there so he had more shades of gray um which is pretty much more of the same uh, and actually there's a little bit more color inside it so just an example of what's inside there. And if I see any of these other, any book like this, uh, if he goes back to another convention, I will definitely be picking these up. So, um, absolutely love those. And then my last one, um, a lesser known artist named Andy Bennett, I met at um, Cincinnati Comic Expo last year. And actually, this is one of my favorite sketchbooks I ever got. It's called Let's Rock an Inktober Project. Uh, so basically last year, I don't know if, it, if there's any Twin Peaks fans out there, um, but last summer Twin Peaks came back for one season and it was probably my favorite show of 2017. Uh, so I was expecting to go to a convention after that and like, oh, there'll be like Prince of Twin Peaks and, you know, other things. Because usually like, for instance, when Overwatch came out 2016, that thing blew up. There was Overwatch prints, posters, comic book, they unlicensed comic books everywhere at conventions I was going to. So I'm like, well, you know, Twin Peaks, again, I know they're not the same type of property, but I'm just using a, you know, one pop culture example and another. Uh, but basically, Twin Peaks came out. There was nothing at this whole convention center at all. So I was there Saturday and Sunday. At the end of Sunday, I roll across Andy Bennett and this sketchbook. And I'm like, oh my God, there's finally something Twin Peaks at this show. So basically what Andy did, um, he drew the month of October in 2016, he drew a picture of a Twin Peaks something or other every day, basically. And then by the end of that, he produced a sketchbook to sell the following year. Uh, so I'm hoping this year he has like something from the return. Uh, but mostly these characters and drawings are from uh, Twin Peaks, the original run they had on ABC in the early 90s, which is awesome, of course. Um, and he has some good quality art, too. I, got a I don't know if you guys watched my sketchbook video, but uh, the sketches in here are the same as he will do in your book for about 
you know, 50, 60 bucks, maybe not even that much. I can't remember at this point, uh, but absolutely awesome art. I was happy to find something Twin Peaks. We chatted it up for like 10, 15 minutes after I bought this. So uh, absolutely love this book. Hey, what's up, JLS? How's it going? Um, other than that, that is pretty much my final sketchbook. So, um, dang, my uh, Unite the Seven hashtag didn't come in brightly on my camera. Uh, it was my viral advertising for the... Uh, oh, thanks, Kat. appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, I, if you guys didn't know, I think a week from Friday, I'm going to be a part of Reviews from the Bat Cave's new live show called Unite the Seven. Um, so looking forward to that. I've been part of like an ensemble live anything at all yet. I thought about trying to get into an auction or something, uh, but luckily, uh, you know, they were. I don't even know how I got in on that cast list. I really don't. Um, so if, uh, you guys can look up. I'll put a link to their uh, video in the below for the preview as well. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing that. And then, like I said, uh, if you guys would like to participate in my hashtag going on. Uh, you know, for, I guess, hashtag read your books. Like I said, I'm not saying anyone's not reading. I know I'm not reading my books. Um, so once again, just to kind of recap what I've been trying to do, because uh, if you guys saw my, you know, my room tour, I've got a lot of that stuff on that shelf over there. I still need to read. So what I'm trying to do is like, I get a trade or a hardcover and I'm, we're going to read it and basically give a mini review just to force myself to read my stuff and review it and hopefully read something good to recommend to you guys. Uh, so if you guys want to, you know, make a tag or something out of that, uh, just so you guys review your books, just whatever we can do to twist each other's arm. Uh, hey, what's up, Rebel? How's it going? <laughs> yeah, sorry, my uh, Unite the Seven thing didn't come out the way I wanted it to in my video. It's right there. You can at least see the number seven. So like I said, one week from Friday, uh, we'll be uniting the seven. Like I said, I, I still don't know how I got in on this seven thing because there's so many awesome YouTubers and then there's me. Like, how did I get in there? Uh, well, I guess we'll find out. So, uh, uh, unless anyone has any questions, I got to make some. <laughs> oh, we're eight now. Okay, so now I got to uh, make a new one that you can't see. <laughs> so, unite the eight. Uh, unite the community, I guess. So, awesome. Uh, unless you guys got any other questions, you want to know how you're... Yeah, sure. I want to know how I'm invited. Of course I do. Australia bound, no videos or comments from you. Oh, have fun, Tacoma Comics. That's awesome. Uh, pick up something cool in Australia. Uh, I'm sure you'll have an awesome video recapping that trip, so that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, just don't spend too much money, man. I hear they're pretty expensive down there. My buddy was going to move to Australia like way back when. This is the last video. Oh, cool. So hopefully <laughs> this will be worth your time. I suggest you and Batcave ask me... We could get, oh, well, yeah, that's what I thought, LP. So, you know, once again, thanks for uh, thinking of me, man. That means a lot. So I'm glad you could uh, enjoy my videos and think of me in that whole group. <laughs> thanks, seriously. So, yeah, no problem, Tacoma. Yeah, I just dumped water all over myself because I don't know why, because I'm alive. So there we go. <laughs> um, so like I said, unless you guys got any other questions, I'll probably start to wrap it up. So once again, read your books. Review a book, let me know what's good, and I need to be reading. Uh, I'll probably try to make a couple videos tomorrow because I got a couple things waiting in the mail, a couple eBay purchases, uh, AOK -okay, I'm kind of waiting on. Um, new comic book day tomorrow, be going to new comic book day. I uh, got a big half price book sale this weekend, everything's half off for Memorial Day. Um, still got to make that wizard video. I told uh, Comic Boys I'd be making, hey, what's up, Pop.Comics? I'll try to drag this out a little longer for you. I figured I'd try to get on before the 9 o'clock Lords of the Long Box show. Um, so as I ramble on, you guys can, I guess, <laughs> click the off button. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm going to try to get a uh, Wizard Magazine video out too, where I kind of just, you know, show some old Wizard Magazines. There was a lot of interest when I brought that up on a previous live show. Um, so I want to show that I got in my closet, I got like a whole box of them. Uh, we can look at values, old co convention ads. They're pretty fun to look at. Um, yeah, I may as well start from the beginning again. I'll just go get some more art books. <laughs> yeah, it'll be all that. Yeah, Comic Boys, I was thinking about you when I was uh, wanting to make that wizard video. I wanted to get on around 8 o'clock, otherwise I probably would have did those. But I was like, luckily I had all my sketchbooks right in a row on my collection. So I just grabbed a handful put them down and just hit the live button so that kind of explains that um trying to think of what else i got in the mail i just got my midtown package i think it's my last midtown package i've got pre-ordered uh, like i said I'm, I'm trying 
to cut down on my my new stuff. Not that reading new stuff is good or bad or anything, but I just I'm I'm having more fun collecting the older stuff than I am reading the new. If that makes any sense. Uh, so and when I pre-order stuff on Midtown, I get it monthly. So when I get like a whole stack this big of books. It's kind of hard to sit down and read them one at a time and, you know, get the meeting out of the books I want to. Um, so I'm going to stop pre-ordering stuff and just start getting mostly probably independent stuff like Image. I've enjoyed a lot of Image comics lately and just started getting that from my store. Um, so other than that, if you guys don't have any questions, slowly hitting toward the X button. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. I mean, you, I've seen the chat blow up. I'm probably going to watch this on the rewind now just to read the chat. So one day I'm going to figure out how I can read that chat on my main screen and have my camera going. Like I said, I'm still a rookie. Oh, I did want to do one shout out. Um, there is a new YouTuber out there. He actually participated in my contest. Um, he had a pretty good entry. His name is Phil Gamesh. Right now he has 11 followers right now i'll put his link up after i'm done so you guys can you know if you're watching on rewind uh you can click that link but uh he's been putting out videos like every other day and showing some good stuff and there's been no views on his videos so we need to help him out uh get him some support and you know get him some quick subs there so i know he'll be a good part of the community and uh yeah let's make sure we get him some subs like i said i'll give him a Link shout out once I'm done with all this. I don't even remember what I'm supposed to link at this point, so I'll put a few things in there. Um, oh, cool, Prowler. Uh, yes, Prowler knows uh, Phil Gamesh, saw his videos. So. And actually, the other thing I want to do tomorrow, I'll probably have a community support tag video out, uh, a couple contests going on I want to participate in. And uh, <laughs> both of these guys were like, yeah, no one's participated in my contest yet, little point, so I will make sure these people get their uh, contest videos uh, put out. So... Um, awesome guys so thank you for participating in the chat uh, glad you guys could make it this has been awesome I've tried to do more of these to you know get used to the lifestyle I suppose so uh, why you pick one just to have two cats okay I've lost complete control of the chat now so you know it's funny someone the other day did ask me if I wanted a kitten when I was at work I'm like dude I'm at work I've actually just worked 60 hours in the last six days so I'm not at home enough to Once again, thank you guys so much and have a have a wonderful night.